Good evening, it's December 19th on the Alan Osborne Show, and welcome to the shit show. Uh, I just can't even begin to describe what happened today's BCC meeting. It's an embarrassment upon the people. What you're going to see is a witch hunt by Tony Anderson, and it's going to start out just to how incompetent we start out with. Mr. Anderson realizes that we don't even know who the directors are and who they aren't. And by state statute, we were supposed to have been doing this since 1996. But just go ahead and we'll start off with the, just we'll just introduce this. The HR director is wanting them to certify who's a director and who's are not. But the underlying issue of that is there's two different levels of employees in the state system. And the people who are in, quote, executive positions that are usually tied to department heads and directors have a better retirement system. So this is a pretty crucial issue. Listen, listen up real quick to what's going on in today's meeting. Good morning, commissioners. Item 11 is request confirmation of all current department heads throughout the organization. Yes, uh, as we talked about uh, yesterday or uh, about we had some, some uh, first of all, we have one of the directors under an HR outside, HR situation. And I, I certainly don't want to vote on that till that is settled. What I would like to do is... What Tony means is there's a bunch of internal investigations that are going on. And here HR knows it, but they're trying to go ahead and confirm that these people who might be fired or department heads. And think about this, if HR isn't sure who the department heads are, is HR making sure that the job descriptions match the org chart? I mean, how do we not know this? This comes up later, I'll move on for this. Is uh, table this to the first meeting in January because you said you were checking on whether some people were actually directors that they were not directors. And uh, you said you, you would investigate that and you were waiting on some information. Uh, we uh, continued that. So Tony gets the deal. HR just said, we don't know who the directors are. And, and they're asking the commissioners who are not supposed to be involved in day-to-day -day operations. Everything is a constant I guess misstep between the staff and the commission. Anyway, this goes on, so here we go. I think it's a right and uh, put it on the uh, January. Is that a motion? That's a motion. All right. I got a first and a second motion to continue this to the next appropriate time to put it on the agenda. Uh, do I hear any, is there any discussion from the board? Commissioner Johns. I'd like a little clarification, please. Exactly uh, what do you mean and who are you speaking of? Uh, well, well, I'm not going to mention any names, uh, but because I don't think that's fair right now. But uh, what? Tony's going to name drop like hell. And Tony's actions are going to put the administrator and the assistant administrator in a horrible position to try to run the county while they get, they try to get the clown show together to run Quinn and Joe Turner and anybody else they can't seem to control out of the county. So go to that. Well, I know if, if, if I was if I was under investigation my name spread out all over the place uh, and I think as a courtesy to our employ employee that we ought not to do it until we get the court back uh, I have watch Glidewell's body language Glidewell's I believe Glidewell's under investigation I believe some of the staff have reported him for breaking the rules. Look at him. Danny's whole demeanor has changed in the past few months because him and Tony are getting together. This is all, and you watch this whole thing, I'm not going to make my show too long. This is all about their allegiance to families and as they quote, people we've known 60 years. Well, government has to turn a blind eye. If you've ever seen the scales of justice, it wears a blindfold. 
And this is the reason why. And here Donna's saying, why you want to cover it up? Because you're exposing all of us, and you're going to embarrass the commissioner and every, or the administrator today, Tony. But but you don't see it's that way for everybody else. No agenda here other than to, I think if we go ahead and make the motion to approve this, and the report comes back, we're going to have egg on our face. I don't think waiting. Tony, you're going to have egg on your face all day. So we'll, that's enough of the HR issue. I'll tell you what sh this show's about is Donna Johns comes on strong this whole meeting. She takes lead on the anti-bullshit. And uh, all the way through, uh, uh, somebody who tried to put light industrial in the middle of an area full of neighborhoods. And oh, by the way, Tony and Danny voted for that. This is the, this is the Danny-Tony coalition of we're going to hold the damn, put the wheels back on the bus, even though the transmission's out. So here we go. We're going to stop and go to the next part. These were my final comments on what Tony and them were doing in HR. For the record, Alan Osborne. I'm going to, I'm going to can you hear me? I'm going to try to keep my comment on this point of what uh, Mr. Anderson said. He said, we don't know who the directors are. That's a great concern to me, and I don't think you should continue it right away. You should have some more discussion on it. Listen, you have adopted organizational charge, and you have job descriptions. Now, I understand this exemption. A lot of that's tied to people's state retirement, is it not? So there, there's a two-tier retirement system, and we all acknowledge that. And part of these titles entitle you to more money. An organizational chart, if it's correct, tells exactly who's in charge of who. So if it's not in the job description by job description, the organizational chart is without fail and you have adopted one. So it should not be in question this board. And HR shouldn't have any questions and if they should have, that mean if they do have questions, that mean they failed in the production of their organizational chart because having lived under an organizational chart, a job description, I've never found myself in government where I didn't know if I was in charge and what I was in charge of. I mean, I mean this, this falls on the way of kind of sweeping the real issue is, is that your administration and HR doesn't know who's in charge. And so if they don't, and y'all aren't involved in daily operations, the people that aren't directly supervised by senior leadership, how they know what's going on? And, it, and it, they should have to look at the wall and go, Bob is my boss or Gail is my boss. And their job description could confirm that. But if we're playing games with the retirement system, that can... that's my comments. Anybody else? So that was how we ended that with HR. This seemed to be a scam to see how many people we could put on the executive retirement program, even if they weren't really meeting the state statute for what it required to be there. It seemed like we're just padding the deck of the upper echelons, you know what I mean? So we'll stop there and move on. Okay, so we're back with you to the main reason that you guys have watched this. Here comes Commissioner Anderson's witch hunt. Now, what's most important about all the statements that he makes publicly about how he's lost faith. Well, we've lost faith in his little troll ass for the way he acts. This is ridiculous. And note that he says he wants him removed and his motion is to remove him without cause. I Meaning we don't have a good reason to fire him, but by gosh, I want him fired. So without a further ado, here comes phony Tony. Take it away. Uh, this has something to do with the report, but I want to start by saying I provided a list of my concerns about the county administrator in the November 3rd meeting, and all those still exist. Instead of his seeking his termination at the time, which I believe was correct, I asked for him to provide us a report and what organizational changes he made and wanted to make in that direction. I wanted to give the board a chance to discuss what the administrator was doing and how he was doing after re reviewing a written document. 
the document does not come close to satisfying our direction as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it, it's insubordination that he didn't do as we asked. Instead of... And Tony said it was insubordination at best. You know, you know, we find this funny that Tony doesn't like being told even though the report was exactly what Tony said. But here's what Tony doesn't have a problem with. Tony's never went off. Tony wasn't upset when his other aide was carried naked by supposedly one of the other commissioners. That didn't bother Tony. It didn't bother Tony to change the definition of open space after 35 years to include the roads is where we should ride our bikes and stuff in a big development order. It didn't, it didn't bother Tony when the county got sued for the sexual harassment over the attorneys. He never made comment on that. And he doesn't care that we've opened a bar and we're spending more on a golf course that he had to abstain himself from than we're spending on all the other parks for our kids in Walton County, according to the statements made today, but here's what Tony's upset over, that that Quinn would actually hold some people responsible and try to do what they hired him to do. Continue, Tony. Phony. Requires our consideration, and it spends pages and pages attack, attacking county employees. Uh, this is wrong and unfair for employees. I understand this. He didn't attack them, Tony. He reported what they did wrong succinctly. And we all have access to that report. And he said that you're doing the wrong thing, Tony. This, this document he presented is a public document. He disparaged Just a minute. If you want to make comment, we'll open that door right now. Keep your comments to yourself. Commissioner Anderson has the floor. Go ahead. The document does not come close to sat to the direction we were given. Instead, it actually telling us what he was doing and why. He says nothing he has done requires our consideration. And then spends pages and pages attacking employees of this county. That is wrong and unfair. Employees. He can write what he wants about me. I really don't care. Uh, but creating this public document is worse for those employees than the actual disciplinary write-up does not even give them a chance to respond. On November the 13th, I lost confidence in the administrator, and this has not changed my motion. I move to terminate the county administrator without calls affecting the people. So there you have it. Tony's mad. They came after Mac, and Gary Shipman's there pulling his strings, and everybody's about had enough of this stink. But Danny's got to be on board, because I understand, like, Danny may be under investigation. And, we, and, you know, there's all this stuff about how all this information's been leaked out of the county, and What's Chaz Galloway's role? And Boots said there's going to be an investigation later. But the bottom line is there's Tony, and that's what his nomination. I'm gonna, this is a long meeting, so I'm going to skip the clips to try to keep it shorter. So here, let's go find out the meat of some other things. Hold on. Boy, y'all are reading. Trying to Boy, I did prepare a response, mainly about... Uh, there's accusations in there that concern me, and uh, I felt it was incumbent to answer those. Um, That's all you need to know about Danny, is the report said he did something in a bad light, and so by God, that's why he wants Quinn fired. Period, the end. Mike Barker needs a job. Danny can't win in the next election. He needs a job. Tony Anderson's got to have crooked planning staff. And that's where this stuff sits for quite a while. We're going to get to the exciting parts. Here's a key bit from Tidbit. Danny says that because a citizen, because an employee might be a citizen too, that somehow that they can come direct to his office and to complain about their work issue and skip the HR and their supervisor chain of command. You know, if it's not rape or a crime, they're complaining about what they don't like 
and Danny thinks that's okay. Listen to it. Which is a citizen. The employees of this county are not only employees of Walton County, they are citizens of Walton County. They have the same rights that every other citizen has to address and have re- But they're not, they're, if they were every other citizen, they'd have to stand at the damn podium. Not every other citizen can run in there and say, hey, something's going wrong at my job and I want you to stick your nose in it. Well, if it's not unethical or a crime, they probably shouldn't be in there. But they're in there for their own behalf, Mac, and all them people in trouble for not doing the software updates and wasting money. They're not just citizens. They're employees with responsibility to the rest of the citizens, you dumbass. Be dressed to their government. And every time I check the Florida Constitution, the government of this county is, resides in five county commissioners. Um, so, um, and there's in three cases, employees came to me and had issues. And I shared that, that information with the admin. Um, I think that was my responsibility to share information. Um, um, well, Danny, if you and Tony are are complaining that admin's doing something that HR should be doing, then why didn't you and Tony share it with HR instead of admin? Why'd you drag them into it? Why didn't you tell that that's an HR issue and take it directly to HR? See, you guys talk in two different tongues, but go ahead, Danny. That uh, apparently the administration picks and chooses what information they want. But anyways, y'all can read the rest of it. That's exactly how the, how the public feels about the BCC. You guys pick and choose what information we send you. And we got three minutes, just like the planning meeting tonight where Shipman tried to show up with stuff nobody had seen trying to get a zoning approval. Y'all pick and choose, Danny. You got letters from the state. You got rules. But you don't want to follow those. You want to put up smoke and mirrors. Now, Danny's about to say exactly what the law says, but he said so many other things that said he doesn't do this, but listen to what Danny says that the commissioner's authority is. I don't agree with it, but I believe that he says this is what their authority is. What is it? What's the commissioner's authority, Danny? What am I supposed to do with that? Just set it, set on my, on my thoughts and say nothing? No, I went and reported what I had heard. Um... I will say, I said at the last meeting, I will say it again. And anybody who's been a county employee longer than a week should know this. And that's that a county commissioner outside of a meeting like this has no authority whatsoever to direct any employee except their aid. That's it. We. That's it. Danny says that's all they can do. So you heard it straight from Danny's mouth. Let's move on to what Donna says. <coughs> now here comes Donna. Commissioner Gray, any comments you would like to give about the open? Uh, yes. Um, first of all, um, county commissioners are not to get involved in the day-to-day -day operation of the county employees. And if a county employee comes to a commissioner with a, a problem, an HR problem, there is a chain of command. There is, you go to your supervisor, you if you're not happy with that, you have a chain of command. So uh, there is, there are rules, and we are not to get involved in that. And mm -hmm. so personally, when I was asked uh, or told about something, I told the individual that they needed to talk to HR. That's proper procedure. It is not my job to get involved in the day-to-day -day dealings with the employees. That's not what we do. We are supposed to be at a different level, and we're supposed to be doing good things for this county, and we're supposed to be taking care of our parks and our infrastructure and our citizens. That's what our job is. Our job is not to sit here and tear off the human being that has only been on this dais up here with us for what, maybe six months? He has done nothing but good. 
absolutely nothing but good. He has brought change, much needed change to this county. Amen. We, as we have re recognized earlier today, we don't know if we've got a director or what we've got. We're not sure who's who or what's what. And this county has been in existence for a long time. And if it takes somebody new to come in and identify our problems, then we should welcome that. What are we afraid of? Are we afraid they're going to find something that we're not doing right? I mean, really, what is the problem here? Boots is having none of this, and that's bullshit. Donna just drove the nail through the head like Brad did when he said this is evil. It was evil last time, and it's still fucking evil. I find that that document, that document was well written. It said exactly what he was directed to provide. He was directed to tell what have you done since you've been here, which I personally think was absolutely ridiculous, but it wasn't my call. So he provided what he's done since he's been here. And I think most of you in the audience have had an opportunity to read that. And I think that he told what happened. People don't like to know what happened, but he told what happened because he's honest, he's fair, and he's trying to do the right thing. And he's not going to let people do things the way they've done it for, because that's where we've always done it. That has got to stop. And now that this whole thing is open, there are a lot of issues, a lot of issues that are coming forth because people are ready for a change. People are upset. And there's a lot of information flowing. And I've got some of it with me today that I will share with you. And I personally think that this is really embarrassing. This is important. I think that when we hire somebody to come and do a job, now, if you think back, you remember what I said when we were hiring him. There was already a plan in motion. They wanted somebody else. In rebuttal to, in, in, in rebuttal to his comments. In rebuttal to his I comments, I think. I think a Listen, she can comment on the report and why she thinks that they are doing this. It's all about the report, Boots. Stop trying to manhandle the meeting just because you won't order. Be consistent, damn it. Okay. That's issue. That's okay. what you'll have okay. all the time you need. Thank you. Thank you. Now, in um, reference, in reference, look, this was again, there's two separate items, so mm -hmm. in reference to We're going to move on and find some more key stuff, show you how volatile this meeting was. And, um, you went to the county administrator and county attorney about an, an employee coming to you. Uh, is that accurate? Well, what? No, I listen. Listen, she, she, wait a minute. 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 Here comes the administrator's I report. I don't remember Damn, my report that I stood in any way that Commissioner Johns came to me. If I did, uh, please point it out and I can address it specifically. Uh, also, some of the concerns that you put out about the report. Uh, it's, on, if, it's on the second to the, to the last page front cover. Second to the last page. Front page of the second to the last page. To the front page last. Let's address both those issues. Um, you have the floor. Okay. Let's address both those issues. The author of that particular paragraph was obviously not me by the nature of the way it was written. It was Mr. Turner giving a report. Oh, no, we can't, we can't oh I apologize. Full, the, that mic. No, I have a mic. I have a mic. I think they can hear me. I was just too fast. Is that correct? Okay. So, so the author of that paragraph was not me by the nature of it and the way it was written. You can tell it was Mr. Turner. I was present for that meeting. All she came to me with the nature of concern. The difference is, sir, is the manner in which he came to me uh, to where it wasn't belligerent, aggressive, uh, authoritative in nature, with some type of retaliatory hint or attempt to it. Not done yet, sir. Um, and she also asked for guidance. 
And she also asked her guidance, what should I do? And I, I told her, you should go to a job directly with that. Uh, in the bulk of your comments, Mr. Anderson, Mr. Uh, Gladwell, you both stated that as you read the report, you were under the impression that I was alluding that you both were together when you were approached me. That's not the case. You were never together. I can clear that up. I completely agree. You, at no time did you approach me in tandem with each other to do it, but you did individually. Uh, and and we're, we're well aware that you did. Uh, it's not lost on staff the reason why we have more uh, low morale. It's not lost on the reason why I had to write this report. It was in direct response of what you directed me to do approximately a month ago. I checked with the county. So basically, if, if it got cut out, Danny and Tony are saying the staff's morale is so low. No, the people who've always covered it up, they're worried like hell that are about to be caught. And they're making all the good workers of Walton County suffer under these crooks and bad leadership and commissioners who are worried about if they knew somebody's daddy or not. Please continue, Mr. Robertson. Attorney, I checked for before I approached this. I had everybody look at it. They said it was factual. There was nothing out of line with the way I wrote it. They said it answered the mail. He asked me to answer. Um, now think about that. The HR section that Danny and Tony praised reviewed Quinn's report and agreed with it. You dumbasses, Tony and Danny, the Bob, the Boopsy twins, the Doo Doo twins. Continue, please, County Administrator. I'm trying to say it I think we all know that there's other activities that are not a part of our discussion right now. Uh, that are in the background, but I literally checked with the attorney as well as HR for all the historical documents to see what occurred during my tenure here. As far as organizationally, if you notice in the beginning of the report, I get clear that I've been following that you organizationally approved to the budget on the previous year. Um, so I feel like I've met the mail. It's unfortunate that one of the expectations of HR it happened during my tenure year, saying it, but I'd be remiss if I didn't. It was not directed towards any employee. Never any employee wanted to go and get called out, but you live in the state of Florida. In the state of Florida, every document is created for purposes of the Public Records Act. What kind of report would it be if I left out the details and then after, if you're successful in terminating me through either a lawsuit or through somebody clawing through HR investigations, it's come to find out that the very words that I've written were true. I had no choice. And that's really all I can say in, in response to that. I had to report the truth. Okay. I Look at the look of dejection on Tony and Danny. This dude just stood up in front of their 60-ass years in the county and said, you told me to report the truth, and I did, and they don't like it. Woo! I have no I had there. Well, I, I, have, you I have a couple of things. Uh, I've never spoken to you and told you to discipline anybody, fire anybody, hire anybody. I've spoken to you a couple of times because people came to me and I had to ask you. And in every meeting we've had, I've said, Quinn, you are their boss. This is your decision, not mine. I'm your boss. I'm not anybody, any other employee in this county's false, uh, except we are, Melissa does answer to the board. That's the attorney. attorney. And, and the attorney. But I have never told you how to run your business. I've told you when you came to me with, an, when I came to you, I asked you to come to my office. My aide sat in a meeting talked to you about an employee that had a job offer. And so Tony just said that he didn't get in the daily employee business. And now he's going to admit that he demanded Mr. Robertson come down through there. They've just been through the budgetary process. 
and he wanted to talk to Robertson about why a department head wanted to give a guy a $10,000 raise that was out of line with everybody else's. Tony, you dumbass, that's exactly what daily business is. And Mr. Robertson's sitting over there have to grit his teeth to have to work for somebody. The people deserve to give the county administrator a boss with a higher IQ who's not over there with his aide running up there to straighten him and Danny's microphones and wipe their hind ends and saying, check your email for shipment or whatever the hell's going on. Like I said, Tony wasn't offended when his other aide, not his current aide, was naked and the person dropped off at the county attorney's office. But he's offended enough over this to relieve Quinn, as he said, without cause and won't support for it. Hell no, Tony. Now I'm going to let you listen to what Tony just says. He says, Quinn, you are their boss. Now listen to what he says, and then he turns around and says that Quinn's doing a bad job, and he sabotaged him in front of the whole county in this meeting. But listen to what Tony says, what he doesn't do, and then listen to his words carefully. Your decision, not mine. I'm not anybody, any other employee in this county's boss, uh, except we are, Melissa does answer to the board. That's the and, attorney. And, and the attorney. But I have never told you how to run your business. I've oh, told yeah, you. Tony, listen to what you just say. When you came to me with, an, when I came to you, I asked you to come to my office. My aide sat in the meeting about an employee that had a job offer and asked if there was any way we could keep him. You said no. That's daily business. And right? I said, I hate to you lose a, a good employee like this. Employee. But I said, that's your decision. I've never overstepped my bounds on what's my decision and your decision. But listen carefully. You said that one day in front of a county attorney that I had never been involved in a day-to-day -day operation. Over the line strong. I don't need you telling me, and I don't need Mr. Johns telling me. I know where the line strong. I don't tell you how to do your job. But let me tell you something. Morale's at an all-time low. And I'm it's at an all-time low because directors are getting different signals from you. And those directors and are my personal friends. I'm happy with the way you're doing your job. I've stated that. I've made that clear my as possible. My developer supporters uh, hate you, and so, so does Matt. So that's all I have to say on that subject. So all right, we're going to move on. So that's it. So that was just the shit show of him attacking Quinn, making it impossible. The BCC has now handicapped Quinn. They need to come back at the next meeting, and one of them needs to make a motion that they not fire Quinn, and three of them vote for it. Just make a new motion and screw that and go forward. This is ridiculous. Anderson, you, item, you want to bring your next item up for this? Can, can we stay on the? Can, so I'll probably get a Greg chance to, to comment on the, the report or ask questions if you wanted to. Could we go back to that? It's, it's, I don't have to, but it's we not. We already it, skipped the order of the matter. Nobody said anything request. about it. Tony was supposed to go before Donna, but Donna went first, so it doesn't matter. But it's... I did ask if you want it. I will grant you alone. I will give you the opportunity, but again, it's to keep it to rebuttal to your interpretation of the report. Right. Well, okay. you had the floor. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I'm a fan of, of getting things right, not aligning on one side or the other. So it's like I wanna I wanna get the policy right. I wanna do the right thing. So there was a request for a report, then there was a report written, then there was a disagreement with the report, then there was a rebuttal to the disagreement. So if I could and just to try to find out you know, where the truth is, I, I would like to ask uh, Commissioner Anderson to tell us what he refuted in the report, and then I want to know if Mr. Robertson agrees with that or disagrees with that, and why. And, and I just want it out there that, that there, there may be a misunderstanding. There may They're never get to the bottom of this, but Brad, Brad comes to the table and says, can we be adults about it? 
But look at Grumble Grunt Danny over there, twiddling his thumbs, knowing there's all kind of bad shit going on in the background. And looking at Tony Anderson over there, who's going to later admit to eating medical marijuana chocolate and then all kind of other stuff comes up. It's just crazy. <laughs> so we're going to move on for a little bit. The show's getting too long. Employees need to adhere to the law. Here comes the bond from Don. I think we all have received emails recently, all of the commissioners, I believe probably our attorney. Um, and in these... Um, you're welcome to look at that one. I have another one. Um, there are emails that have been going around, and they were emailed to us. Oh, boy. And they are... They've all seen them. Well, we were down in Tampa recently for a conference. Boots didn't even bother to And I'd like to read some of these excerpts. From Body this. language, Boots. We're in one of our commissioner's aides is communicating with another citizen and uh hey i was on the other line i couldn't answer but we're in the we aren't in the vehicle alone so i really can't talk we're headed home from a conference we've made it to crystal river and then mr galloway says well i've got some good stuff to tell you and miss lowry says well, dang, I'll have to wait hours to hear it. Is it good or bad? It's good. And he goes on to say that, according to my esteemed legal counsel, it appears that the District 4 County Commissioner, the count current County Administrator, and the Assistant Deputy County Administrator have not only violated me and Robert, being Robert Nelson's civil rights, but they've also violated 300 people that signed the petition civil rights. Ms. Jones. Yes. I have a question for legal. That's my decision. I will clear. Look at Booth. He's not going to be questioned at all. He still don't get it. He's still got that badge on. He cannot put that badge down. He's like a cop that wants to search your car, and he's decided you're not cooperating, so I'm going to manhandle you. At the same time, he's got three deputies patrolling over a crowd of about 50, 60 people, which is huge, by the way, for December meeting. But go ahead, Boots. Get wound up. I'm not playing here. Let, let me say what I got to say. Here's my, here's where I got a legal question. She is reading from, obviously, screenshots of, correct? Is that correct? That's what that was an email. Just, okay, let me ask you this. But this is a private text. Do we do we have did, did the person whose phone this come from give permission for this to be screenshot and used? Oh, it's it's a a of because here's the deal, folks. By crim that is by criminal statute a crime. This so I just want to make sure we're not that we're going to address I both believe sides. So. so my question is. It, I'm asking Lee. Since we do not know that these screenshots were allowed to happen with the owner of that phone, is it prudent to bring this into discussion? Well, there's not consent given, and having no other information about it, I would call the board very likely. Because you're well, This was Boots trying to make an emergency stop on information that can't be taken back. This is bullshit. And he's looking, he's just trying to salt, serve up a softball for Clay to hit. And Donna's looking at him like, well, we all got emailed this shit. It's a public record, Boots. What are we supposed to say? Act like it didn't happen? Go ahead, Boots. And an open to, to criminal allegation here on somebody that's not of this. This was in part, I believe, to everyone, which makes it a matter of public record. Not if, not, not, not if it was done at the start illegal. I don't know how it was done at the start. All no. I know is I received hey, it the same way that we should did. tread lightly. If we don't know the origin of this, we don't know anything of that nature, as always, this is not an evidentiary hearing, so I'm not going to get into evidentiary value. The bottom line is, all of Chaz Galloway's downloads and all the crap him and Robert Nelson are connected, which probably points straight to Danny Glidewell himself 
And look at Danny's body language right now. He's twirling his mason ring. He's probably putting his little apron on his head and spinning it around hoping he can hide. I mean, he knows that what Donna's talking about is going to stick to him like flies to poop in the summertime. And that's the problem. So Boots goes on, and I'm going to shorten up the story. Boots goes, oh, I'm calling the sheriff. This is an investigation. Where did this information come? If that's Chaz's phone, does he have permission? Who has permission from Chaz? And there's a long discussion about it, but you have to wait till the end. So I'm going to pause it right there and let you know that Boots is, wants all this demanded, and he's going to the sheriff's department to figure out where this come from. And then I drop this bomb on him later. Hold on. Well, okay, well, I'm gonna have to correct Boots here real quick. He doesn't well, know he's at on the phone. Well, that thing continues. He's about to get yes, mad sir. at me, but I'm yes, actually sir. correct again. I have something I'd like to say. Well, no, here's the deal. It's not all that. Well, that's when public com comment comes up, you can come up and say it, okay? Alan, go ahead. I mean, but hang on just a second. Let me catch it up. We, we're moving on. And I do believe the comment is the next thing on the agenda. Now, Mr. Osborne, you had your hand up first. So listen to You're what I tell him. For so three minutes. Long to investigate about who had permission Please to see all Please direct all your comments stuff. and questions to the chair. Who had permission from and Chad to listen to this for, crap? For the court. For the record, Alan Osborne, this wasn't an agenda item, well, that's their body but language. you brought it up, Chairman, about the investigation. You don't have to do that. Uh, but, but if you do, tell them to make sure they interview me. Because I've got the password to Chaz's stuff, and I bought it from him. When he was broke, he sold me his computer and voluntarily gave me his password. So when you want, when you want to know how this stuff got out, well, I, I mean, I'm just going on the record here. Bro. You're you on the say record. you're going to be in, involved as the chairman, so I'm talking yes. to you that they should probably interview me. I will bring that and then, information <laughs> for the authorities. And then, you know, I want to tell you something else. Laughing his butt those off. texts were on a county computer anywhere. They're now public comment. No matter how they got there, I guess you can do an investigation of how they got there. But the ones I provided, Chaz gave me the password voluntarily. So if that's a crime, to buy somebody's password and their computer, let me know. Because I'm, I'm a criminal. Okay? We, we will see what the authorities, so, so, how they run with it. Secondly, on that, you know, the emperor has no clothes today. And we all know it. My public comment is this. I agree that you commissioners can say you've lost confidence in somebody, but so can the public. And we don't have to wait till election time to make that vote. We can come here any time as citizens. What you saw here today was a discussion about improper relationships bleeding over into government. You're right. It's hard not to have a relationship with people you've had for 60 years, but I never had to deal with that in government because the people I worked with weren't my friends. So when you have a small terrarium, as you would, of government, then you have to be overly conscious that you follow the procedures because they've sat there and admitted that they're so close to these people that they're, they're, they're not going to hear their complaints, even if they're told not. Kind of skating on uh, back on this. this. Is just, in general, with every issue that you handle. Hypothetical, go ahead. Hypothetical, this applies to almost everything you guys do. So you're going to have to decide at some point if your personal relationships are overriding the ability to govern because my personal opinion, I'm unsatisfied with some of the things. I came before this commission, and y'all voted two years ago to, for Clay to take action on that Driftwood Sandestin stuff, and nothing happened. I'm just saying my comment. You can address it if you want. Nothing happened. But nobody wanted anybody fired over that. You know, and Commissioner Anderson voted no to fire Clay, which is not up today. So if we're not going to follow the rules and we're going to pick and choose, know that all of us out here are a vote of dissension, that we're not satisfied that you're living up to our standards. You're certainly not to me, Mr. Anderson. That's my comment, Chair. But, and the investigation, yeah, I couldn't get video on somebody threatening me, but we got video of somebody off duty. That's a problem. Thank you. Who would like to speak next? Yes, ma'am. So that's where we stood at today's meeting. It's pretty bad. 
Let's see, I got there's another thing from Donna Johns I want y'all to hear. She was bringing it strong tonight. This is worth listening to. Miss Barbara Morano, this has been very stressful, not only for you, but for everyone in the audience, but especially for Mr. Robertson. I just want to say we have fake profiles on Facebook. We have a fake county surveillance tape video going viral on YouTube. And we have text messages sent to thousands of Walton County residents by a very skilled entrepreneur. I just want to put that on the record. The same guy Donna My background was is about. in school administration. Even at the lowest level, when a new teacher comes into a classroom, there are changes. Enough. Teddy. Here's some other good comments. Listen to Teddy Stewart, what he says. He recognizes the buffoonery of the shit show here. Thank you, Chairman. Teddy Stewart, for the record. Mr. Chairman, I hope that um, sometime this week or in the next coming days that everybody sitting up there will go back and watch the video of this meeting and promise yourself that you won't embarrass the county any more than has been done today. If there are any businesses watching this meeting to try to make a decision on where they want to move to, we just got crossed off the list. And it's not all of you, certainly. We can't do business that way. In the hallway, outside, talking to people in here, the number one sentiment that I heard relating to what was happening in this room was embarrassment. Which hunt? We deserve better than that. Bonnie from everybody. Tony. On, on, on leadership and on bringing new leaders into an organization, you know, I was blessed to have been the leader of a large organization in a big city where we had a change as a city manager and the chief of police. Um, ironically, both of those leaders came from outside of San Antonio to San Antonio to take over those positions. The success of a new leader, like Mr. Okay, Quinn. We're, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you some lead right here, but please you're, do. you're skirting it. It's just, just a general statement. Yeah. But the success right. of a leader dependent upon those who are in power that he's going to be working with is up to you to make him successful. Because Amen. you can you make him successful support. or you can right tear right. him down. That's a decision that you personally must make. If your interest is in the good of Walton County or any organization, your interest should be to make that leader as successful as possible. Okay, I'm okay. going to. That, that's my statement. Okay. I just I want to make sure that I hope every one of you watch this video. I hope every one of you promise to come in here on the 23rd and not embarrass Walton County further. I don't think that's the intent of any commissioner up here. Yeah, Leitner. Um, she does a great yeah. job for the volunteer firefighters. I, I was going to, to, to come to you and ask for help, but I spoke to you. I, I told him. Oh, okay. She, she, did. she, she did. Sorry. She, she did. Okay. She's okay. Um, I, I spoke with Shane Abbott last night, and I feel like he is actually doing what he can. But I still feel like I need to, to speak. I've got my script. I'm not a public speaker. You're not educated um, on the volunteer So I'm not really asking issue you to do something end. at this point, She's just to be aware of what's going on, um, what our sheriff says about all the great coverage we have in the North End, and what Tracy Ball stands up and tell, tells everyone about our coverage is, is not what we have um, without our volunteer fire, firefighters to assist. So I, I'm just going to... Go ahead and read my script now. Well, uh, be mindful you don't, you've got less than three minutes, so you might want a bullet point. All right. Sorry. Okay, I'm here today in support of our volunteer firefighters. Um, money does talk louder than lies, so let's just start there. If these departments are dissolved, that leaves five unmanned stations with a six in the, in the proposed sheriff's budget for 2024. This budget shows a nearly $9 million increase already from last year in salaries and benefits alone. That's without filling the holes losing all our volunteers will create. State statute requires four firemen to enter a hot spot. Adding six stations is going to create a need for 20 more staff per shift. I'm losing these two, fi these two fire departments and they're going to have five stations apiece. Now, that, when our hospital closed, we got a new ambulance. We couldn't even staff. I'm sorry, I'm having to skip around. No, we couldn't okay. even staff an ambulance with two 
paramedics. How are we going to fill this void? Um, I, I rode around to these stations. We're already, we're, we're already so short staffed right now. Um, Moss, let's see, Gaskin, that's where I went to yesterday. It's got a two-man crew. Glendale three, Mossy had two at each station. Paxton three for the truck, two for their ambulance. Woodlawn has four, Red Bay three. The Liberty station that just got taken over, quite interestingly, has five. It, it looks pretty good. Five people manning their stations there. So no matter where something happens in the county, if two things happen in Gaskin, if there's a house fire and a car fire, they have to pull from Paxton. They have to pull from from Glendale, from Mossy Head, and the entire rest of the district is left without coverage. Um, we, we just don't have the staff that we need, and I, I didn't have the time. I'm like, I jumped around too much, but I'd just like to ask you guys to keep your eyes on what's going on with these volunteer departments, and please uh, try to do anything you can to help them. Um, we have had two instances in the last year where without those volunteer departments, I would be dead and my son would be dead. We do not have the coverage we need right now. Um, if any of you want to get with me, I don't think I made a whole lot of sense trying to run. No, you did. I can explain it a whole lot better with a little more time. It's not yeah. anything else we've talked about today that's as important as this. Right. She did a great job saying, look, people, this stuff in the background we survived on volunteer firefighters and something weird's going on and we're not going to have good coverage and it's going to cost, even this lady knows, she sees it because she's been hurt and needed this service and her family's used it before and been involved in it, but she understands the words $9 million. Listen up, commissioners. Walmart. You know, there's a power Every line back the there that runs behind it. It's Shipman the same power line, strikes out. same easement. Everybody's had enough of his bullshit. Watch what Donna John says. Any other questions I can answer? I've seen in the board have any other questions. Do we need a motion? No, I, now we will entertain a motion. I would like to make a motion to deny. We have a motion to Amen, deny. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All right. Any further comments? Tony looks at Danny like, oh, shit, we're beat yes. again. Look, Danny covers his mouth and looks to Shipman and nods his head like, okay, okay. I'll still yeah. vote again. Um, I'd like to say a few things about this. I've got quite a few emails from the citizens, and it's the end of, the show all right of them here. are concerned uh, about changing this. I think that on the south end, we have done so much changing and so um, that's why we're in the place that we are. And we need to have safety for the people. We don't have sidewalks up and down these streets, you know, and, and we've got a lot of people that travel up and down these streets. And as she mentioned, she takes her fifth wheel in and out. Can you imagine having to stop and wait for boats and trucks and, and commercial Donna's vehicles and all that stuff constantly coming and going? When your kids are right there, there's a bus stop close by. The people don't want this change, and we are here to do what the people want. That's what we Amen. are put up here for. And all I have heard very loudly, including all of the emails I've received and everything else, that you don't want this. You bought your property in residential neighborhood, a residential area. And I think, as someone mentioned, it could... It could um, reduce the, their their benefit of their property um you know we want to keep the property values high we don't want to diminish that also our land development code says that for every thousand people we're supposed to have 6.25 acres of green space i don't think there's any park along that that road there at all and that's unfortunate i'd like to see the county buy some property and put in a park there that's what we're supposed to do Amen. we're not supposed to change it and let somebody put in some industrial stuff just because they want to they knew what they bought when they bought that property Amen again. and i for one stand strong with Preach the people it. of this county Preach that it. don't want us to make this change so therefore that's why I want to disapprove this. And with that, it got disapproved. And that's the way it was on December 19th, 2023. Boots did the right thing. 
but y'all, what they've done to Quinn, what Tony and, and Danny Lidewell have done, folks, the county is a mess. Demand transparency. At least Donna and Brad are dragging boots along to do the right thing. Trey was over there watching today, licking his lips. Let's not let it happen. But that's the way it was on the Alan Osborne show. They've forgotten where the Constitution lies, and we've got to point them to true north. And, that, and I'll talk to you soon, because y'all keep them straight out there, because if we don't, they can't keep themselves straight. See you next time.